All right, guys, it is that time of the week. Time for our week eight NFL predictions. Then we're going to look back on how we did for week seven. Add it to our total record. You guys know the drill probably by this point. So let's get right into the games for week eight. We start with Thursday night football as we always do. And thankfully, thankfully, at least on paper, it's a pretty good matchup. Ravens and Buccaneers, a disappointing Bucks team that just lost to the Panthers inexplicably 21 to 3. I don't know why. This offense does not look good. This defense does. This is a spot for them to bounce back at home in Tampa. Tom Brady usually doesn't lose multiple games in a row, even though I think he did, or did he? I don't remember. Uh, I think he did actually, but regardless, Tom Brady, he knows how to bounce back. He's been there, done that. So I'm going to go with, actually, no, I'm going with the Ravens because I actually think the Ravens are playing better right now and they just look better than the Bucs. And I think even though the Bucs defense is good against great quarterbacks like what Mahomes did to them, it's going to be tough to stop. So I think Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are playing better than the Bucs. So I will go with them and I'm just not sure how much the Bucks are going to bounce back. I think they'll be fine, but I still don't know. So I will go with the Ravens to win on the road. And then we have a London matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars that belong to me in terms of fan base wise, my Jags. And I'm not actually the owner, that's uh, Shad Khan, but um, one day maybe against the Broncos, <laughs> Denver Broncos, Broncos country, let's ride. I'm not sure if Russell Wilson's playing but regardless, this is a disappointing team. Two, two and five teams. The Jags should be a lot better than two and five. We've lost all five games by eight points or less. So we're kind of beating ourselves. But the Jags, now Travis Etienne has the entire backfield to himself. James Robinson was traded. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. And right now, I think the Jags are clearly the better two and five team. I know that I pick them every week, but this week I have reason to do so. The Broncos are not as good as the Jags. The Jags are favored as they should be. I will go with them to win and cover the spread. Then we have the Falcons and Panthers. The Falcons, three and four, got demolished by Joe Shiesty last week. But still, this is a team that's better than a lot of people thought. Three and four. Panthers, two and five. They somehow beat the Bucs, but I think the Falcons will take care of business here. I still don't think by any means the Panthers are anything but a not good team. The Panthers are not good, okay? I know they beat Tom Brady, but flukes happen. This has actually been a really surprising season up to this point, so that's why it's been hard to predict things, or I'm just historically awful at predicting things, but two things can happen at once. Regardless, I'm going with the Falcons to win and cover Bears and Cowboys. You know what? I gotta give it to the Bears. They were very impressive yesterday on Monday Night Football going into Foxborough. And a young quarterback, a young team, demolished Bill Belichick's defense. Not something you see often. But do they beat the Cowboys in Jerry World? I'm going to say no because I still think the Cowboys defense is has an argument to be the best. Justin Fields, he was impressive. I'll give it to him. But I don't think he's going to be able to win in Dallas, especially with the defense, like I just said. But I will take the Bears to cover out of respect. The plus nine and a half, I think they're better than we thought. I think that spread is a little bit, it's not very generous to the Bears. I think they deserve to have a little bit better of a spread. So I will respect them and take them to cover that because of what they did yesterday on Monday Night Football. Then we have the Dolphins and Lions. Maybe one of the higher over-unders this week. I mean, this. let's just check for the heck of it. Yeah, I think it is. Um, and you know what? It makes perfect sense because the Dolphins are a very good offensive team when two is healthy. And he is now. And the Dolphins, or sorry, the Lions have a really, really bad defense. So this could be fun. Start all your Dolphins. Start all your Lions. This could be high scoring. I'm going to go with the Dolphins to win in Detroit and cover the spread. I just think the Dolphins are the better team, and their defense is still better than the Lions. And yeah, so the Lions aren't living right right now, so they're, they're not playing too well. So I still think, I think the Dolphins are clearly better, so I'll take them to win. Cardinals at Vikings. Vikings 5-1 and one, favored, but only by minus 3.5 because the Cardinals, at least from what we saw on Thursday Night Football... They finally looked good offensively. They finally scored more than like 20 points. And that was because maybe because DeAndre Hopkins came back. So we'll see how the Cardinals play with their second game or 
play their second game with D-Hop back. Is that ultimately what will change life and turn their season around? We will see. I'm going to take... You know what? Road upset. I'm taking the Cardinals. I really think they are playing better. I think the Vikings are obviously very good. Probably the best team in the division right now with how the Packers are playing. But I don't know. I think they have some weak points. I think... I just don't see six and one. So I think this is where they lose. Five and two, road upset for the Cardinals. You've got to have some upsets. Mix it up, keep it spicy. And <laughs> that's one of my upsets of the week. Raiders and Saints, two teams that are prop below 500, but to many people's surprise because these are probably two playoff caliber teams. Still could be, still pretty early in the season, not even halfway through. Right now, I like the Raiders better than the Saints. I think they're finally starting to win some games, and their offense looks pretty good. The Saints' offense, I'm not sure if Michael Thomas is going to play, or if Andy Dalton's the QB, or if it's Winston. Question marks there. So I like the Raiders to win in cover on the road. I think they're in a better situation right now, and they had lost some tough games, so I think the Raiders are due for some positive regression, so that's why I'm picking them. Pats and Jets... What about the, how about the New York Jets? Okay, five and two, great defense the last handful of weeks. I know they lost Brees Hall, but getting James Robinson was a really good trade that they made. And I still think this defense is going to have a pretty good time the rest of the year. I think that this is a, one of the better defenses. I think the Jets are, are kind of a playoff caliber team. So I think right now they're better than the Pats. Whether it's Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones, a confusing situation. I don't think either of them is going to have fun against this Jets defense. I'm going to take the Jets to win and obviously cover because for some reason, they are not favored. That makes no sense to me. In New York, better record than the Pats. Three and four for the Pats, five and two for the Jets. Yeah, why? What's, what's up, Vegas? You know, get to work, okay? Steelers and Eagles, Battle of Pennsylvania. The undefeated Eagles coming out of their bye week against the Steelers. And the Steelers do a good job, even though their record's not great. The Steelers do a good job of staying close. They don't usually get blown out other than the game in Buffalo. They kept it close with Miami. And most of the time, it's a close game because their defense is very respectable. So I think this will be closer than the spread. I will take the Eagles to win because they're just rolling right now. And I think they're better than the Steelers. That's pretty obvious. But out of respect for the Steelers' defense, I think they will cover the spread. Titans and Texans. Titans are playing pretty well now. They're clearly, I think, the best team in the division, especially with the Colts disappointing and benching Matt Ryan, which we will get to in a second. But I will go with the Titans to win and cover. I'm surprised the spread isn't more favorable to the Titans, despite the, I know the game's in Houston, but still the Texans are not fooling anyone in terms of being a good team. So that's surprising to me. Then we have the Commanders and Colts, a revenge game. Carson Wentz against Matt Ryan, except neither of those are happening because we have Heineke against Ellinger. Who would have thought? Uh, so this is not a revenge game, but the Colts, they're just that moment, you know, the owner, Jim Ursay, clearly saying that we're benching Matt Ryan. It has nothing to do with his shoulder injury. They're basically giving up on their QB, not even halfway through the season. Can't say I blame him because Matt Ryan's played horribly. I will go with the Commanders to win just on sheer momentum. I just think the Colts are kind of heading down right now. And I kind of get this feeling because they're benching Matt Ryan, even though Ellinger, who knows, with a young quarterback, but you can just kind of tell they're okay with not, th not necessarily throwing away the season, but, you know, I don't know. I just get a bad vibe from them. I think they want to just tear it down and start over. So... Commanders win. Rams and Niners. This is a rivalry. Niners got the best of the Rams at home. Now the Rams get a chance already for the second time this year to get revenge at home. These were probably supposed to be the two best teams in this division. Neither of them are playing as well, in at least record-wise, as they should. I'm going to go with the Rams to win. I'm I know the 49ers are favored, but just slightly. I just don't see the Rams losing this matchup twice. Rams coming off their bye week. Maybe this is the week they turn it around after a week off to rediscuss. They got to figure things out. So I think the Rams are going to start getting things going. I just have a feeling after their bye, Sean McVay, he's going to figure something out. And also Jimmy G on the road against this defense. I still trust Stafford. I still think Stafford's better than Jimmy G. So that's another factor. Giants and Seahawks. Look, I don't want to hear you Seahawks fans saying, I've talked to a couple Seahawks fans. I'm friends with a couple. They tell me they're upset. They're upset that they're four and three. They're upset that they're winning the division. I say to that, 
to heck with that. If you have a chance at making the playoffs, this team is surprisingly good. You got to root for them. So I'm tired of Seahawks fans wanting to tank. You're in first place right now. You're playing the Giants at home. This is a chance to move on to five and three. And I think the Seahawks are going to win and cover partly because Seahawks are better than we all thought. Hopefully DK Metcalf, you know, we'll see the severity of that injury, but Kenneth Walker playing really well. Geno Smith put some respect on the man's name. Great story he's been, but also the Giants barely beat my Jags. The Jags made a lot of mistakes and the Giants six and one, so much credit to them, but are they really a, I mean, they're going to lose at some point. They're due for a loss. I just think they are in Seattle, tough place to play with a Seahawks team that is winning the division. I like the Seahawks to win that game in a mini ups. Actually, no, they're favored. So <laughs> Vegas kind of agrees with me. Packers and Bills Sunday night football. Oh my God. Has Aaron Rodgers ever been this much of an underdog? I'm actually curious about this because rarely will you see an Aaron Rodgers led team not be favored number one, but number two be plus 12. But that just tells you how great the Bills are and how great of a home field advantage they have. I think the Bills win this game. The Packers have been disappointing three and four, and I think they will turn it around, but not this week because, I mean, the Bills are almost unstoppable right now. They've had a week to rest after their bye. I think they will win, but I think it'll be closer than people think. I wouldn't completely rule out the Packers, and their defense is going to probably keep them in the game, so I don't think it's a beatdown. I think the Packers cover. I think it's a one-possession game and a good game, but nevertheless, Bills take it. And last but not least, on Monday Night Football Battle of Ohio, Cincinnati Bengals at the Cleveland Browns. Bengals, Joe Shiesty, Joe Burr, that offense is just getting better and better. Back to who they were last year, especially in the second half, including the playoffs. Bengals are basically back. Browns, they, they weren't really there that much in the first place, but, you know, there's some regression a little bit. I think they're due. For, I just think the Bengals are the better team at this point, obviously, as we expected at the start of the year. At the start of this season, we probably would have said the Browns were better temporarily, but now the Bengals are back. I think they're going to win. I think they're going to cover. This Browns defense has not been as good as people maybe thought. It's not scaring too many people, especially their pass defense. Joe Shiesty might have another field day. He is absolutely rolling right now. So those are my predictions, guys, for week eight. Make sure to comment your opinions. And before I go, this last week, I was about to say this week, this last week, we went nine and five. So better than the six and eight from week six. That moves our overall record to 62 and four. 46 decent solid not great could be better but guys that's how the season's going these are my predictions for this week comment your opinions as always like the video if you enjoyed subscribe if you're an nfl fan and you haven't done so already why not it's free and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one